second point, let's talk about, I guess they called them the big three, the big three enhancements, <laughs> the bigger GPU, it's machine us. learning, oh. and ray tracing. Uh, you, sorry, what was that, John? <laughs> you talking about the big three, and I thought you were talking about us, <laughs> the, the panel on this podcast. But <laughs> yeah, the, the only big three that I'm uh, sort of cognizant is uh, Virtual Fighter 2, Virtual Cop, and Sega Rally. <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm on board with that. The big, big I agree. for Sega Valley, uh, for, for Sega Saturn back in the day. We, the can't, big, we can't match up to that. Yeah, no. that was the epoch-making big three. But the big three, <laughs> the big three for Sony this time is um, uh, PSSR or PISA, as you like to refer to it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep that. Ray tracing <laughs> and uh, the bigger GPU. Uh, interesting that um, 60 compute units versus 36, but only 45% of extra GPU power. Um, yeah, 67% more compute units for 45% more uh, performance. I guess that kind of makes sense in a world where your memory bandwidth can only go so far and where typically efficiencies sort of drop. It's also interesting that, um, and this was pointed out to me by a duo um, on Twitter, I think, where um, the road to PlayStation 5, Mark Cerny talked about um, uh, fewer compute units running faster, so kind of narrow but fast. And um, but this time around, PS5 Pro is essentially wide, but the same speed. Uh, right. In terms of yes, yeah, so it's an interesting uh, sort of distinction as that things have changed clearly because of the uh, of the opportunities that were actually available to make a Pro console. Um, we are hearing interesting things about a boost mode. Presumably, and you would expect that that forty five percent of um, extra GPU power goes towards like unenhanced PlayStation uh, 5 games, um, which should just naturally run faster. Um, Alex, ray tracing, we've got to talk mm -hmm. about it. They did emphasize the additional ray tracing power. They did suggest that it's an AMD technology uh, coming from, I guess, RDNA 4. And um, I think in the CNET article, Mark Surdy was basically saying that Sony were pushing for this. Um, right. we've, I think we've talked about it in a prior DF Direct Weekly. There have been leaks of what we could expect from RDNA 4 RT, but it's still quite unclear as to, you know, how it's going to measure up against, say, you know, NVIDIA solutions, right? Yeah, it's still just as unclear after this. Um, the uh, I think it could have been a bit better communicated what that maybe means with different examples. Right. Um, because we've already seen uh, ray tracing in Gran Turismo 7. It was just limited to photo mode. Yeah, right. We already saw that. And we also already saw ray tracing. Didn't we already also see ray tracing in Hogwarts? Am I mistaken? It did have an RT mode, yes. Yep. Yeah, so I feel like they could have shown an example of based upon a new game doing something different. Right. Maybe they just want to save that up for a different showcase that is coming in the future. But I feel like that would have sold off the the RT difference that it could be versus, you know, whatever the standard PlayStation is or just the standard console experience. Uh, so, yeah, that um, there was the direct reference to two to can trace rays at two to three times the speed as of PlayStation five. Well, once again, I'm still wondering exactly what that is referencing because it's got like just about double the compute units and uh, well, 60 versus yeah. 72, which would be double. But yeah, I think yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the point. I think I get what you're yeah. saying, which is that yeah. obviously there's going to be extra RT hardware per compute unit. So it's not that's what all, I'm wondering. It's not all architectural increases. It's also just sheer brute force for more compute, right? Yeah, that's what I'm. So I'm like wondering exactly what is it? What is it being attributed back to in the hardware? Because we, you know, I think that one leak about the variety of things that are done, uh, spent some more time and talked to someone behind the scenes about it. Like some of them are about like testing triangles better and getting more results kind of essentially for the same amount of stuff being raised, being shot out. And, you know, I think it describes mainly smaller additions to the 
kind of RDNA and not something so nearly as transformative, actually, as what we saw uh, with Turing or, I guess, Intel back in the day. So I'm still really, I really just want to know more. <laughs> uh, I just don't know nearly enough. And I would have once again chosen different examples. It's really cool to see GT7 with ray tracing and gameplay. I think that's going to be great for people that love that game. Uh, but it, we already saw that on PS5 to a certain degree. So I wanted to see something new, um, but that was lacking. I think they just don't have any examples yet because like maybe they were most outside of like Hogwarts, they were mostly focused on just first party titles. And I don't think they have anything like unannounced and ready to show or does it even make sense. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they're probably just not there yet. I'm actually surprised still. They didn't reveal any new games at all, but I guess it's hopefully coming soon. Well, um, there are rumors of a state of play uh, quote, right, unquote, right, right. dropping next week or the week after or whatever. I will say, yeah. though, that uh, showing GT7, that, that is a night. GT7's ray tracing features were pretty high end. Like, the reflection quality was way uh, higher than what we typically see in ray traced games on the PS5. It, it also, right. I, I hope it, if it retains the exact same characteristics, because it has a very, very, uh, like, very rough surfaces show reflections in GT7, which is something that usually the roughness cutoff usually gets adjusted for consoles, right? And right. they allowed extremely rough materials to reflect. And if that's actually in the game, it's pretty cool. Uh, but you're right. I, the other examples, like they showed Hogwarts footage where they were talking about it. It was still running at 30 frames per second, which I thought was interesting, given uh, what they were just saying about that earlier. Yes. <laughs> you know? Mm, it, it's, <laughs> that's not great, yeah. is it? <laughs> yeah, the reflections, I mean, this is an unreal thing, but it, the thing is... The reflections were grainy in the Hogwarts footage. And yeah. I know Unreal Engine 4's RT reflection support was, it was nascent and it could have very, been done better. Um, yeah, but, it's extremely heavy. Yeah, it was also mm -hmm. very heavy. Um, but, you know, like, like I could see the grain over the footage at the, the bad YouTube footage. And I was just wondering, like, like, is it still like quarter res or something like that? I was, you know, just like wondering all these things, but I, I can't really know until I have the game in much higher quality in front of me to even say like what this upgrade really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, machine learning based upscaling. Uh, what could, what could we say about that? We didn't really have any chance to get a, a decent look at it. <laughs> did we? No. <laughs> potentially, I mean, potentially yeah. transformative. Uh, if we're talking about, you know, some sort of, XESS style DLSS. I mean, here's the thing, right? I think it is potentially awesome, right? Because um, uh, especially when you're using a 4K TV, the you know the amount of actual base resolution you need to get a presentable image on screen is actually surprisingly low. I mean, yeah. 1080p works just fine, and you know even some of these PlayStation 5 games that go down to like 640p or whatever. Uh, put that through a machine learning based upscaler and even that would look great. So even before you've got the extra GPU horsepower, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot to, you know, a lot of potential here in terms of actually dramatically increasing the quality or, you know, being able to use the GPU time available, uh, freed up by the machine learning pass just to do more things, more ray tracing, for example. And right. I think there's also been, there was a CNET um, article there, and that talked about an 8K mode for Gran Turismo, <laughs> which, uh, well, right. let's let's just say our 8K capture cards are ready and waiting for this. That's funny, though, <laughs> because that, that actually does fit in with what Kaz and them love to do with Polyphony, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, right. They were like the, one of the first, if not the first, like 1080p thing. Well, they were there with Ridge Racer 7, I guess, but they had the GT... Uh, what was it called? It was the GT thing for PS, the pro, whatever. You know yes, the one for PS3. The, the demo at launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the demo the, that was 1080p. Yeah. So they yeah. were all, and they they had that 1080i mode in GT4 on PS2. So, like, it does not surprise me one bit that they would be talking about that. But still, 8K, yeah. I'm glad that they didn't actually emphasize 8K or even mention 8K at all yeah, in the yeah, initial yeah, yeah. presentation. Agreed. It was kind of like a bonus, nice to have thing that they included in the in the CNET presentation. 
Uh, the CNET presentation, utterly bizarre. The, the video was 1080p 30. Oh, you couldn't rich. actually see how, anything. How, how, how does this stuff happen, right? Like you give something like that to an outlet and then they don't seem to get even the basics of video encoding and like quality. I don't even know. Down. They obviously didn't it's record it in 1080p 30. It's insane. They, they obviously didn't. I mean, like what uh, are they even doing? Why would they, why would you upload a 1080p 30 and anymore? The quality is terrible on YouTube, especially for something like this. It doesn't yep. make sense. Hashtag true facts. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything more we've got to say yeah. about the big three uh, before we well, move on? About Pisser. Um, <laughs> I, I really... Oh, so, no. for example, they, they very specifically, other than when highlighting things added to third-party games, so they did highlight Hogwarts, right? Mm. And they showed what it is doing differently, but they didn't show a comparison versus what it previously was. And I think they're doing that because they kind of don't want to say like, oh, your multi-platform title doesn't look good enough on PS5. Or yeah. they just want to leave it to their own library of titles, these examples. that And that was so I think like them showing off games that already look kind of OK. <laughs> is, good. Yeah, right. Like. I don't think many people were super complaining about the image quality in The Last of Us Part Two's performance it, mode. No, Sony's games in general have good image quality. Yeah, yeah, they take care to do that usually. And um, But if they did, for example, they have Alan Wake 2 as a listed title. Yeah. And if that is using PSSR and is probably now targeting 4K, which I imagine it is. It should be transformative. If they show that, just the camera pan with motion blur off in the forest or in the town verse, or even the character's head or anything like that versus what presumably is good pisser quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you know how this would have I Like if I was doing a video on a PC version of a game and I wanted to show DLSS looking better than FSR 2 in for something, I would always really show it off, you know, like... You can really easily show it off. So I think them yep, being yep. limited to these PS titles as actually, that's not going to be the transformative thing necessarily. I think it right. could be third party titles, right? So that was, that was my big thing, Alex. It's like it felt, it felt like what they really needed to show here was some of these Unreal Engine 5 titles. We've oh, yeah. seen all wow, these UE5 nice. titles coming out with this absurdly low input resolutions, like really like sub 720p in cases using FSR2. And the result is bad. It's really bad. And this would have been a chance to like really showcase, like, look how much better this looks. But Sony doesn't actually have anything like that in their first party stable. No, no. Unfortunately, I mean, it's good, but also for this case, it's not useful because their image quality is fine. It's the third party stuff that's really, really, really struggling right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see head to heads uh, from Sony because we'll produce them. Well, we'll produce them, sure. But the point is that I think they they actually sidestepped it quite nicely by saying, yeah, what you're getting at 30 FPS on the base PS5, we can do at 60 on the Pro. Um, that's the kind of like, you know, it's you can still have that stuff if you want on the on the base unit, but it's going to be quote unquote choppy. Um, so, yeah, but you're quite right. The third party titles, anything that's using FSR2, if it gets a PSSR uh, a refit, so to speak, it should be pretty good. Uh, just to sort of go back on some of the details that have come from the developer portal. Um, previously, gaining new features uh, for old games required updating the SDK, uh, which is quite problematic and actually is um, very difficult for developers to actually you know, make their games compatible with new SDKs. Um, PSSR can actually be retrofitted to games running on the older SDK. So potentially, mm. you know, game changing um, image quality changes, improvements should be seen there on a range of games um, that doesn't require a huge amount of um, developer input, which, which is potentially a great thing. One would imagine that the inputs required for PSSR will be the same or very, very similar to FSR2. So it should be, you know, pretty, pretty decent and easy to do upgrade for a lot of yep. games. And that's probably going to be quite transformative. And if they're using DRS as well, dynamic resolution scaling, then 
more right. GPU power means they're probably going to be reaching upper bounds on that or close to it. So, you know, this is potentially really, really exciting stuff. Um, is, is there anything more that we need to talk about before we start talking about the things that are less impressive, like price? Um, I mean, I think that's it. Okay. Like, yeah, I think that hits it, it's it. It looks promising, uh, but okay. it wasn't necessarily shown off as well as it could have been, as I kind of think the takeaway here. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, it, we just need to get some good trailers out there that actually show, show the difference where somebody is putting in the effort to show the difference. But the question is whether Sony actually wants that from, from their perspective. It's, uh, it's, right. it's kind it's of weird. weird.